Hi guys, um, today we are going to be talking about uh, operations on functions. This will be our first video in a three-part series, okay? So let's go ahead, open it up with the first and the first fun problem. So we have two functions, namely f of x equals 1 minus square root of x and g of x equals 2 minus the square root of x. And there are two things that we are asked to find. Uh, one, we're supposed to find uh, the sum, and then two, we're supposed to find the product. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, we're also asked to find their domains. Okay, so I will go ahead, wrote down what I what I called problem A. So it says find f plus g of x. And the question is, how do I know if I'm supposed to add, subtract, multiply, or divide? So we have function notation. In this case, we have functions f and g. And since the functions are separated by an addition sign, then I guess we are to add them. So how do we add them? Same way you do with whole numbers, okay? So uh, we're going to take f, the first function f, and it is a function of x. The operation is plus. What are we going to add to function f? The second function g, which is also a function of x. Cool. So I feel like when we write it and apply the, the definition of the sum function, it's a little bit easier for me to digest. So it's like, okay, I know how to add these bad boys. I'm going to just take the first function, whatever that is, add to it the second function. So once we finish adding them, then we have to uh, uh, identify the domain. Something that you have to bear in mind is this, uh, regardless uh, of what the sum simplifies to, we have to respect the domain of the original function. So let's go ahead and look at our original functions. For the original function, um, we don't have a polynomial function and there's a radical involved with even root. Uh, we need to make sure that um, our radicand is not negative. Okay, so uh, in order to find the domain, uh, let me go ahead. Uh, let me go ahead and write this on the side. So we have f of x is equal to one minus the square root of x. We need to make sure that our radicand is not negative. So no, the only way to make sure it's not negative is if we tell the reader, hey, you better not be negative. Uh, in mathematics, we say that the radicand, in this case it's x, has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, there's nothing to solve for, so the domain is just going to be that. Okay, it has to be x is greater than or equal to zero. And then we'll put that in uh, interval notation in a bit. Cool. Now, what about the domain of function g? Okay. Uh, this is a little bit too low, sorry. Okay. What about the domain of function g? So g of x equals 2 minus square root of x. Uh, there is a radical involved with even roots, so same speech. We need to make sure that the radicand is not negative. Okay. So in order to do that, we're going to take whatever our radicand is and tell the reader, hey, reader, you can't be negative, or we say it's greater than or equal to zero. There's nothing to solve for. So in this case, the domain of both function f and g is pretty much um, all the real numbers that are at least zero. So with that being said, uh, when we add the functions, we need to make sure we respect the domains of the original functions. So uh, let me go ahead and write this over over here. Uh, for lack of space. So we have f of x plus g of x and then f of x according to the problem that is given by 1 minus the square root of x. So we put 1 minus square root of x and what are we going to do? We are going to add to it that second function which is given by g of x and according to the problem that is given by 2 minus square root of x. So at this point you go ahead and nail it. When we combine the like terms, uh, the sum of the constants, namely uh, 1 and 2. Sorry, I was going to highlight them, but I don't know how well the highlighter translates. Uh, the sum of 1 and 2 is 3. And the sum of the radicals, negative square root of x minus square root of x, I believe that gives us minus 2 square root of x. Uh, I should have indented more, my mistake. Um, in this case, because we are asked to uh, compute uh, two different things, um, it would be nice if I told the reader what equals 3 minus 2 square root of x. It's like, okay, the sum equals that. So we have that the sum equals 3 minus 2 square root of x. And we also have to identify the domain. Um, the directions don't specify uh, how to write the domain. Um, if we put it uh, in set builder notation or interval notation, but um, we'll never go wrong with putting it in interval notation. So we know that the domain of the original functions are uh, pretty much x is greater than or equal to zero. What is the domain of the sum? So in this case, we also have a, a radical with even index, and we got to make sure that a radicand is not negative. So we're going to say, okay, um, 
and take that radicand. Tell the reader it can't be negative and uh, there's nothing to solve for. So that's it. This is my thinking area. So the moral of the story is that the sum of functions f and g is given by 3 minus square root of 2, uh, where the domain is given by the interval. If you can read this statement and you're like, I'm on it, I know how to write the interval, cool. Uh, for me, this is out of my comfort zone. So with your permission, we're going to graph all the elements in the domain. So we're going to graph all the real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. So this is a line. I dare not call it a number line because we don't have a number on it. Uh, I want to graph the numbers that are at least zero. So it would be nice if I located zero. Uh, zero is part of the domain, so we can graph it because we have the equal to part. And then you can use a bracket if you like. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't really use a bracket because I have to think ahead. I have to think like will it open towards the right or will it open to the left. If I graph it or fake graph it with an open circle, I don't really have to think ahead. I take it one step at a time. So we have zero is in and the remaining solution or the remaining elements of the domain should be bigger. So we're going to go ahead pull to the right. And then with confidence, it's like, okay, interval notation goes from left to right. So we start at zero and end nowhere, but we pull towards the positive direction. So in this case, the domain is given by the interval from zero to infinity, where zero is included. Fantastic. So that was our first problem. We have one more to go. Moving forward with problem B, we are asked to find f g of x. To be more specific, I uh, should read this as f times g of x. Let's go ahead and use the product rule for functions to rewrite it so that way it's a little bit easier on the eye. So we have uh, the first function, which is f, and then uh, f is a function of x. The operation between them is multiplication, so we're going to multiply it by the second function and that is also a function of x. So remember, uh, we are asked in this case to find the product of these functions, and after that we are we are asked to identify the domain. But remember, we have to uh, respect the domain of each function. So from the first part, we had that the domain of f of x, uh, sorry, the domain of f of x was x is greater than or equal to zero, and the domain of g of x was the same. Also, x is greater, greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So f of x, so can I project the original problem? Uh, uh, not really, so you're just going to have to trust me. Okay. Okay, so f of x, according to the problem, you can always rewind. Cool. So f of x, uh, we have 1 minus square root of x, and then we're going to multiply it by g of x, which is given by 2 minus square root of x. Now, I understand that we... Uh, I know, I know that we understand each other, but the world doesn't. We meant to write this times that, but the world doesn't see this times that. The only, the only thing the world sees is uh, being multiplied is the square root of x times 2. So don't forget to wrap up your two-term expressions. Cool. So at this point, you foil it out or do what you got to do. doesn't matter how you say it. We're all going to get the same answer. So product of the first terms will give us 2. Product of the outer terms will give us negative square root of x. Product of the inner terms will give us a negative 2 square root of x. And product of the last term, so gentle reminder, uh, because we have the same index when we multiply them, uh, we're going to go ahead and multiply the radicand. So x times x will give us x squared. So that will give us square root of x squared. Let's take our time and combine the like terms. So we only have one constant term. The sum of the radicals, uh, negative one, uh, negative square root of x minus two square root of x will give us negative three square root of x. And if you're like me and you need that special effect one, ain't no shame, go ahead, pencil it in. So that way you can see, oh yeah, negative one minus two is negative three. And then we're gonna add to it uh, whatever this simplifies to. So let me go ahead, highlight the index. So index is two, power is two, they undo each other, and that will leave us just with the radicand of x. Let's go ahead and bring this together. So we have two minus three times the square root of x plus x, and we had more than one problem, so it would be nice if we told that reader what this represents. So when the reader looks at it, it's like, oh yeah, this is you know product of f and g. So we nailed the product, but now we have to respect the domain. So the domain of f is uh, all the numbers that are at least zero, 
same thing for the domain of G. What is the domain of the product? So I'm going to focus on the radical. I don't want to circle it because I don't want to rewrite it. Okay. So uh, the domain, we're going to go ahead and focus on the radical term. And we want to tell the reader, hey, reader, um, our radicand cannot be negative. So in symbols, you know, we're going to tell the reader that the radicand has to be uh, greater than or equal to zero, which uh, goes by the domain of the original function. So there is no drama. But I'll give you a spicy one in a bit. Cool. So the domain in interval notation, uh, I'm not going to do it again because we just did it earlier. In inter interval notation, it's given by the interval from 0 to infinity where 0 is included. Fantastic. So you guys are awesome. So that was the first up. Uh, this was the first video in the three-part mini-series. So if you give me a second, I'll, I'll come with two more. Thanks, guys.